Welcome, everybody, to the sixth and final lab session for writing Wikipedia articles, aka Wikisu. Uh, I am really pleased to see you all here, and especially uh, happy with all the work that I've seen getting done on your various final projects. Uh, unfortunately, Sarah is not able to join us today or tonight where she is. Uh, she's still in Berlin and was planning to uh, to log in at whatever it is there, two or three in the morning, uh, but I think finally thought better of that and uh, accepted my suggestion that she might want to sleep instead. So she, uh, she sends her regrets and her uh, appreciation for the work that everyone's done. And uh, of course, I have huge appreciation for all the work that she's done, so it's too bad she can't be here, but uh, I'm sure you'll all agree that she's been a big help along the way. So um, I think we have plenty to discuss if people want to look at the articles they've been working on. Um, and I'm, as always, I'm happy to take general questions, too. Uh, this is, again, our last session, so we can really be as freeform as we want to. I think that uh, I think pretty much everyone here is, is, uh, is in, in good shape with their final projects. Um, so if you want to just you know, ask general questions or bring up general ideas to talk about, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, or we can look at your articles. So anyone have any anything they want to bring up to get us started here? I have a piece I'm working on. Can I send you a link to sure. my sandbox? Yeah. OK. That load up. Um, I don't know if you want to look at the that article too, but yeah, I think I think we probably should. That's because uh, this is a piece I had to cut out because Kathy uh, felt like I hadn't formatted it nicely enough. Oh, I see. So this is something that you had you were suggesting to include into the the FET article, but you feel like and so I've I've been working on it um, mm -hmm. to make it look nicer, and I and I, so I'm looking for ideas. Um, I had it all as a big paragraph, uh -huh. and she said uh, it was hard to read, and she suggested a list, and then she also said I had some grammar errors, so I'm working on the list. Okay. <laughs> but one of the questions I sent out that um, I didn't get an answer for was um, on the Fed article. I was trying to decide what the title of this is, mm -hmm. like the section title. Yeah. So there's lots of people who have teaching ideas other than Fed, mm -hmm. and um, so I was trying to highlight those. So I don't know if it would help to look at the article. Yeah. Sure. That so I'll just. Pull that up in another tab here. And I tried to earn my badge last night and spent an hour and then because of the fires in Colorado near my home, oh no. All of a sudden <laughs> the internet crashed and I lost all my work. <laughs> Oh no! In in going in the um the application on the on yes, the yes valuable page. lesson oh, no. learned. <laughs> uh, I am very sorry to hear that. Well, oh, well, you know, I should know better. I should know to do it in word and face, but I didn't. Yeah, well, and I'm sure we've the all fire's had some just like four that. miles from my house, so oh, I guess boy. everybody was online and knocked me off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope your I hope your home is safe. Yeah, uh, it turns out uh, because the other fires were almost out, they were able to scurry a crew right over here. We were lucky. Mm -hmm. okay. So actually, I'm I'm noticing uh, I we should probably have a redirect here. Um, I put in just FET, not FET Interactive Simulations. So let's just so how do you add dive in, let's, Yeah, that'd be cool um, so because I'm I've had to... that problem, but I didn't know how to solve it. Right. <laughs> So yeah, this is going to be a, a good lesson in a couple of things. So I, I, I think we've covered redirects before, but there's because of the capitalization of the word FET, this is kind of an interesting case. So what I'm going to do first is go to 
the actual article, if my browser will just wake up here. Uh, I seem to be really lagging. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if the progress bar is showing up for you guys, but it keeps zipping across about a third of the way and then just stopping. I'll try that one more time. Well, okay, I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna just pause on that, and uh, I guess I'll I'll come back to it, and hopefully my connection will be better in a moment. But in the meantime, so um, as I I think you've you've seen before, if you type in FET uh, just all lowercase, it comes to a disambiguation page, um, which uh, leads to several possible definitions of FET. Uh, let me just try again here. Oh, this is really going to make our session hard. <laughs> it's just, Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, so I'll I'll just describe it verbally, and I'll just I'll try to come back and and demonstrate it after. So, um, so the the disambiguation page is appropriate if someone just types in types it in in all lowercase. Uh, because they might, or in all uppercase, maybe uh, if there are other acronyms. Uh, but but the capital P lowercase H capital E T formation is um, surely pretty unique to uh, to to your organization. So it right, it used to be an abbreviation for physics, education, and technology. Uh -huh. But it doesn't mean that anymore. So in physics, we start a lot of things with pH. Got it. Yeah. So so in in the you know perhaps unlikely but possible event that someone types it in that way, um, I think we can be confident that they would be looking for you guys and not looking for one of the other definitions of FET. Uh, and so it makes sense to put a redirect on that page. And the way that you do a redirect here, I'll just type it in the address bar, which I think you guys can all see. Oh, I see it really is loading up slowly. But um, but here's just the So uh, I think I think you can all see the address bar how I typed it in there. Redirect colon right. set interactive simulations. So if you create a page and that is the only content, uh, then that will become a redirect. That will automatically redirect the the reader to the proper place. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try refreshing again here. I think when it comes up partial like that, um, I think it's actually a I think there's actually something slow on the Wikipedia servers. I'd be, I'd, I'm curious if other people are having the same kinds of issues. If you're, uh, if you, if anyone else has Wikipedia loaded and if it's being slow, anyone else want to report back on that on whether it's a problem with my connection or if we're all having this issue? Hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm well, just trying to see if I, I get right to the website. Right. Okay. So, um, so Ben said it's fine for him. Ben, why don't why don't we try sharing your screen instead of mine? Is that all right? Do you want to? Um, I'm going to just click stop sharing for myself, and then since you have the moderator privileges, also uh, you should be able to click the double rectangle that's near the upper left, um, and then start sharing below that. And then you can choose your web browser, and it'll share. It's it's only going to share the windows from your web browser, not from other programs. So why don't you give that a try, and maybe we can maybe we can browse through your your connection. Ah, good. Okay. So um, maybe Ben, why don't you uh, pull up uh, the just the the spelling that I did before? So uh, with the lowercase h and uppercase. E T, yeah. And so this shows this does not yet have an article with this exact name, but now if you create one, um, oh, I think you're not logged in, so it's not letting you create a create a new page. So, and uh, and just one thing to keep in mind, Ben, since you haven't um. 
haven't shared your screen before. Anytime you switch back to Blackboard Collaborate, um, it will it's going to put a, an annoying gray box for the rest of us in front of that part of your web browser. So uh, it's you know it's not a problem if you do it briefly, but if you if you go back to Blackboard Collaborate and hang there for a little while, it'll be a little tough for us to see. Hi, Christine. Welcome. We're just sorting through some uh, some screen sharing issues. My browser seems to have some major lag, so uh, so Ben is sharing his screen instead. Okay, so now Ben's uh, creating that new redirect, and he's typing in the text that I put before. Uh, and it's it's FET. Uh, oh, I think I put in a colon that was actually incorrect before. I got thrown off by typing it into my browser window. Yeah, and that's just right. So should we also do P-H-E-T or no? But, I mean, without the capitals. No, because that page already exists, and that's the disambiguation page that we look, looked okay. at before. So for, for that one, we, we don't mm -hmm. know whether people are looking for the interactive si simulations or one of the other definitions. So it's, it's appropriate that that one should have a list of links on it. Um, so anyway, all of this is kind of incidental to what you were asking me about. Um, so maybe we can. Well, it was interesting because I wondered how people would find us. So we've gotten these uh -huh. flags in the last couple days. Yes. Um, right. And so this so, was part of what I was trying to add was more information about other people who develop mm -hmm. um, communities of how to use FET. Ah, I see. And so yep. I called that section OER um, and I posted something a couple of places but nobody answered. Yeah, I remember I seeing something. You can scroll something. down then to I, that. So yeah, I wrote OER, OER teaching, teaching, so teaching. It is in here. I see. And and then um, I wondered, and so the piece in my sandbox is uh, the piece I had added that Kathy cut out because she said um, it looked bad as a giant paragraph, and she okay. thought I had some bad grammar. Okay. But one of my questions is I have OER teaching community, and then I also have that paragraph about other organizations that are not OER. Uh huh. Yep. Other OER organizations have also provided ideas and reviews on how to use FET simulation. And then I have a list of them in my sandbox. But yeah. would it be better to just call it like teaching communities share ideas or something more generic or? Well, I don't. I don't really see a problem with the section heading as it is. Uh, but if okay. does, does anyone else have a take on this? Um, I, I think there are. I think there are probably several reasonable possibilities, uh, but this this one seems reasonable to me. I I do think. What, why don't we take a look at the um, at the article talk page? Um, so this is. Uh, I think you were the only. Uh, you and Kathy uh, were the only ones who took on writing an article about your own organization. Uh, and I think we we talked earlier in the course about how that can be more challenging um, because of the conflict of interest concerns. So that's why I was trying to add the uh, yeah, content yeah. about other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, I see that connection now. Um, so actually, the first section on this page, uh, pretty early on, I I believe if I remember right, I think Kathy had um, had actually. Uh, submitted this argue, article prior to the start of the class and had it turned down uh, in the articles for creation process. And it was actually about the third week of class. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh -huh. um, so we didn't I, know I, how to do it. To class. Right, and and I think that the um, I think this person in the first section, uh, Howikus, um, I'm who says you did a pretty good job of keeping it neutral. And I'm looking at the website. I'm pretty sure I used some of these in high school. So I'm pretty sure that that's the person who reviewed it in the articles for creation process. So that was a good, um, you know, I, I, the way I see it, that was a good endorsement of the effort that Kathy had made, that you and Kathy have made to uh, to keep the article neutral in spite of your connection to the the organization. 
Um, but then more recently, a couple of days ago, there's this section, Problems Due to Conflict of Interest Editing. And this is a very long comment. I actually uh, jumped in and, and just, just responded to the beginning of the content, which from, from my point of view was, was a bit hostile, was um, you know, the, the idea that, there was, that you guys have blatantly disregarded um, some advice. I, I, I don't think that you did. I think that we discussed uh, the various approaches uh, that you could take and what some of the considerations around that are. And you know, I, I, I think you guys are uh, as aware as you need to be that there are people who, who would consider it improper um, to ever post anything in the article space itself about your own organization. But as we discussed in the class, that there is no policy against that. That's a, that's a view held by some individuals in the Wikipedia community, not, not an official Wikipedia policy. So, um, you know, I, I strongly believe that the approach that you took is just fine, and there are plenty of other people on Wikipedia who would as well. So I think these are, these, the, the concerns that he brings up um, are, are probably worth considering, but I do think it's a little bit overstated in terms of you must go about it this way. So I, I did see that Kathy has, um, has, has tried to take some of that into consideration and, and has worked on the article a little bit since it came up. So this is sort of a, a, a bit of a you know, dispute in progress, and I suspect that it will all come out pretty well, uh, and I think it will be a good learning opportunity for you guys. Christine, I see you're, you have something to, to say. Please jump in. Sure, just a couple of thoughts. Um, I, I posted some... Um, alternative headings for OER teaching community in the chat window, which you can uh, consider perhaps. Um, two observations, um, Pete, which um, maybe you can um, corroborate. Um, one is that it seems like maybe this is, is um, doing something that Wikipedia advises against, which is self-referencing. So for example, in keeping with Wikipedia's guidelines and conflicts of interest in disclosure, that seems like something that would go on the talk page and not on the article page. Um, and then the Are other option. about the banner that's at the top? No, I'm talking about the actual content mm -hmm. um, under the section, let's see. It's taking a minute for it to, to load. Okay. Yeah, that's the talk page. I like some of your ideas for names. Oh, I see. We're on the talk page. OK. In, in that case, never mind. I was thinking that we were looking at the uh, article. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christine, yeah. uh, um, I, yes. I, I can't remember if it came after I asked people to look at my sandbox. Did, did you I, I probably did. I was a few minutes late. Oh, I will do that. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind looking at it, that's where I was trying to add things to the community that were not, they were communities that talk about how to use that that are not us. And um, Kathy took it out temporarily um, due to her, she thought I needed to reformat it. And, and that's what I was asking some advice about was if people liked the new formatting to names. Christine, I've just uh, pasted that link to, uh, to Trisha's sandbox again in the chat window. Thanks. I'll take a look. So, so this is essentially, this is uh, a much more detailed version of what could go in that section. So. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I. I hadn't, b before you brought this up, Trish, I, it, it hadn't occurred to me that this was uh, something that was intending to um, sort of broaden the scope of the article and talk about things that are outside of the direct control of, of FED itself. Uh, and it, it makes sense to me now that you say it, that that's, uh, you know, that that's one dimension of what can, um, that can, can reduce any perception that it's, uh, that the article is just for self-promotion. 
Um, and I, so I think I, I'd like to, you know, just endorse that as an idea. I do think that um, to the extent that there are um, external sources uh, talking about this aspect of that, I think this is a great thing to add to the article. It's it's a little bit, just in sort of scanning through it quickly here, it's um, it's a little difficult for me to accept, uh, to assess because while there are certainly a lot of references here, a lot of links to um, to sources that are independent of that. Uh, it's you know I would I would have to kind of pour through it a little bit to get a sense of are they ind independent of the um, let's see what am I trying to say if if are they independent of the effort that they're talking about so like if the if the National Science Digital Library has its own uh, project that inter intersects with FET, um, that's great, but it's much it's much better to include in the Wikipedia article if there's an article, you know, in the Chronicle of Higher Education that talks about the National Digital Science Library and their engagement with FET versus having something that's just from the National Science Digital oh, Library's own site. I um, thought, I, especially I with that absolute one. No, no, but it's just uh -huh. you know I I think it's I, I you see. know to the extent that that it's sort of That it's an independent source talking about it. That's really that's that's the best sort of thing that you could. That's the best sort of source you could use for a section like this. I kind of had a question too about like Indy, uh, NSDL has a Wikipedia page, so I didn't feel like I needed to say as much about it. But the other ones don't. And mm -hmm. so I see what you're saying. Like maybe I should find articles that talk about Physics Front. Is that yeah, exactly. That that would be. So I I think that someone who's looking at the article this article with a critical eye and maybe with with more of a critical eye than than mm -hmm. I have, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that they might find fault with. Um, and you know, I think it's I think it's you know I think it's really a matter of degree. If if the section on the whole has um, has some good independent sourcing and then has a few points that aren't as strongly sourced as the rest, then that might be OK. But if the entire section consists only of uh, sites talking about themselves and their own engagement with FET, then that might be a little more problematic. Christine? Yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate something I, 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 I'm not sure if I've said in this um, section of the course or not. I know I talked about it a bit in the last one, which is that I think a, a common challenge, and especially for an organization, um, placing uh, an article into Wikipedia um, is is um, being is getting over the fact that you're so close to it. And one way to step back and look at the article more objectively is just to think of it more in terms of contextualization of um, of you know how that relates to things that are more generally encyclopedic. Mm -hmm. and, and not so much um, what you know, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis about FED. Yeah. You know, I should uh, I, I should also mention this. Uh, uh, Kathy did submit this uh, for the WikiSue Burba badge, and I did review it for that. Uh, I'm just trying to pull this up, and I'll I'll try to share this. Um, I actually uh, I addressed this a bit in my review. Um, let's see if I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the screen sharing back um, so I can show this. And hopefully my connection has recovered a bit. So uh, so here you see uh, this is Kathy's uh, submission of the article. She describes what you guys did. Uh, lessons learned, and then below it is the feedback that I gave. And um, here I said uh, I would rank this article as a C class, and in order to reach B class, it would be helpful to have some sub substantial input from somebody unconnected with FET or with our our class. So um, that's something that's obviously a little bit outside of your control. Uh, it's certainly possible to reach out and request that people. Look at it and put some work into it, but um, but you're 
you know, you're sort of, you're, it's, it, it can be kind of a big ask. So, um, you know, you might not get as deep engagement as you like. Um, but, you know, I do think that for an article to really uh, become, I'd say, mature and, um, and among the better content on Wikipedia, and especially if you're going to go in the direction of nominating it for good article, um, it's really important to have that significant engagement by people who are not connected. Um, so, it, you know, it might be something to, you might want to, uh, the, you could either make a request at a relevant wiki project. So certainly uh, putting a note on the Communicate OER talk page, uh, requesting that someone look at it would make sense, or uh, there are various wiki projects related to education um, where you might find someone who's willing to give it a, a review and give you some feedback. Um, and and also, I think it's I think it would be really valuable if there's anyone else on this call, anyone else in our class who wants to take a look and um, and review the article. That would be a big help as well. Um, it, you know, I think just just because uh, it, I mean, it really it's it's really most ideal to have someone who really isn't connected at all. And so your fellow students might be kind of more inclined to uh, to look kindly on the article than someone else. But that doesn't mean that it's uh, you know it's still worthwhile to have. Uh, to have others in this class look at it. Uh, ben, I, I don't think we've heard a lot from you on this topic, and I bet you have have thoughts about it as well. Anything you want to add? Uh, nothing particularly coming to mind. I think you've covered it for the most part. I will say engaging other community members on topics is probably going to be a rather cumbersome process. Um, just generally, don't get too frustrated if the first talk page you try doesn't materialize to anyone. Uh, you just have to kind of look around. Eventually, you'll probably find them. Yeah, and there is actually the. I, I believe I covered this very briefly early in the class. There is the um, the peer review process on Wikipedia. This is this is something that um, it's it's not connected directly with um, with good article or featured article with with uh, getting to a specific status on Wikipedia. It's something that you really can submit an article at any state in its development. Um, so this this would be an option as well. I think with uh, with the peer reviews, it's it's considered uh, especially nice, and it's possible that it's even become a requirement. Uh, by this point, that you participate in a review of someone else's article before nominating your own, um, but that this might be something to explore. It's uh, it can be a bit of an involved process, and it probably will take a few weeks before you really start to get substantial feedback because there's often a bit of a backlog here. Uh, and also, you don't. So, I, I think there's the, there's a bit of a trade-off with with. Uh, with wiki projects, if you if you went to the communicate OER talk page and asked for feedback, you'd be more likely to get um, get input from someone who has some familiarity with education and with with open educational resources, but sort of less likely to get any response at all because it's a much smaller audience that you're speaking to. With the peer review, you're more likely to get some kind of response, but it might not be someone who knows anything about education. So you might get you know more just more general input like uh, you know grammatical uh, suggestions and and phrasing and things like that, but they might not really be informed by a, a deep understanding of the topic. So thanks for taking up so much time. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sorry, well, a, I, did, I didn't need to take a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, Trish. I, I think um, I think this has been of interest to uh, a lot of people. It's um, so I, I don't mind a bit, and we haven't had other people. I, I don't think we've had other people uh, itching to talk about their own articles. It's possible I've missed something. So why don't if there's someone else, uh, why don't we talk about another article for a bit here? Oh, EJ. Have a question about badges. Um, let's see. So I'm going to just pull up your article here. I'm going to rearrange my windows a little bit.
frustrating. Okay, so you have a question about badge submission, and uh, but first you want to know there's a direct quote by Christensen describing the plant. Would that be considered a primary source? Okay, so let's find where this is. Okay, so this in, is this entire paragraph um, a quote from Christensen? Hi, Red Belly. Welcome. Okay, so. I would think that this is probably a bit long for a direct quote, um, and uh, I mean that's you know that's a judgment call and and uh, not necessarily a problem. But my inclination would be to rephrase this. You, uh, there are two. There's a couple of considerations here. One consideration is copyright, um, and it because this is such a substantial chunk of text that's uh, exactly quoted. Uh, it, it may be that this would be permissible under US law as fair use, as like critical commentary or putting, putting his words in context. Uh, but a lot of other countries are not as, uh, as forgiving. They don't have a fair use provision in copyright law. Um, and Wikipedia tends to be rather um, strict about such things. So you probably will find that, um, that people will object to having such a long detailed quote and will want you to paraphrase this and cite it. Um, and then, you know, I think there's also a case to be made that that just makes for a better article as well. Um, the, uh, it, it looks to me just from a quick glance like this is a very, uh, a very technical sort of jargon filled uh, commentary, so uh, it might be very useful to someone who has a background in botany, but Wikipedia really aims to um, to serve the general reader who doesn't necessarily have any background in this field. So again, paraphrasing this in a way that makes it more accessible to a general read reader would be, um, would be a good thing to do. So does that help? Okay. Orchidists are, are very technical, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've really enjoyed watching this article come together. It's um I, for anyone who hasn't watched this this article, um I believe the version of it when you guys started was maybe about two or three sentences. It was about that much and it maybe had a basic info box. Uh, so it's really been fun to see you collecting your sources and building out the article. I especially like the uh, the anatomy image that you found. Very cool. Anyone else? Or actually, you said uh, Lori or EJ. I think you said you had a question about the about the badges too. So do we include why we think it's notable? Um, you know, I don't think that there was ever really a question about this one, whether it was notable. Um, it, I, I, I suspect that with plant species, there's a, a pretty liberal uh, sort of definition of notability that basically says if, if it exists, it's notable. Um, it's, it's really not my field, but that would be my, uh, my guess. Um, I'm going to just see if there's a botany which wiki project. I'll bet there is. So wiki project plants. Um, I would imagine if we poke through the pages of this wiki project, there is probably some um, some guidelines around notability specific to plants. So it it would be it would be an inter interesting thing to mention in your uh, in your badge submission. I wouldn't say it's necessary because uh, I think this is clearly a, a notable entity. Uh, there was no flag questioning its notability. The stub had been there for a while, so 
I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's a big concern. Um, Cami, yes, I, yeah, if you the the 200 edit total is uh, is cumulative. So if you'd already been working on Wikipedia beforehand, that's just fine. So I, you know, I think the the most important things to to talk about in the badge submission are uh, what kind of thinking you had around the referencing. Uh, how many references you added and what kinds of references you were looking for. Uh, also, any comments about the section structure. So in this article, there were no sections, and you created one called description, one called taxonomy, one called anatomy. Um, so you know maybe why you chose those, those section headings, if it was based on uh, another article like we discussed on the talk page. Um, you know, I've been, I've been following all of your articles to some degree, but, um, but it helps me to uh, to kind of get a, a reminder of what it is that you've been thinking about, and also I think it's important uh, for you to reflect on what you've done and and um, where your journey on Wikipedia has taken you, because it's uh, it's it's really easy to lose track of um, of what's happened over a period of weeks, and I think looking back and thinking about what your decision making process was and how things changed over that time can be a really uh, a really useful exercise. So that's what I'm looking for in the badge submission. Hey Pete, one one thought on this article is: um, are, are we generally encouraged to use active voice um, in scientific articles like this? So perhaps you know, instead of saying "can produce" and "is said to be," um, you know, it's a well-established specimen which produces more than fifty flowers, where the fragrance is rose-like, as opposed to passive. Um, you know, I don't work on enough scientific articles to really know what the convention is around those things. I think that's a that's a, a really good question, and there probably has been some discussion around that. Um, I think probably the best way to answer it would be to look at some uh, some botany related featured articles and see what kind of voice they use. Um, or again, uh, the Wiki Project plants may have some commentary about that, or just ask on the um, on the Wiki Project Botany talk page. That's so. Let's see. Is this uh, so? Okay. So there's already a link to Wiki Project plants here on the um, on the talk page, and also to the region that it's native to. So you know, I would uh, I I think it would be a nice thing, uh, Lori or EJ, to just go to this Wiki Project. You you may or may not want to join it. Uh, which you would do just by clicking on this participant section, uh, and then they've got a link to this separate page, so you could just add your name to the bottom of this long list. Uh, and then uh, that that part is is really is optional, but it can be a nice thing to do if you want to continue working on this article. But then just go to the project's talk page. Uh, my guess with a with this one is that it's probably a fairly active wiki project. Uh, I see there there are comments from four days ago and six days ago, and you know several from this month. So I would just leave a comment at the bottom of this page, um, saying I put a bunch of work into this article uh, as part of my work for a class, and you know I would appreciate any input or feedback on it. And if you have specific questions like that, just ask them here. They're going to be pe people who are watching this page are probably going to be more qualified to answer some of those questions that are specific to. A, an area like this to a scientific article than I am anyway. So I would heartily encourage you to uh, to do that. And just to clarify, I, I didn't mean to be um, uh, making a, a critical observation about this article. I wanted to ask a more generalized question, just sure. for um, Reference to all of us. So, Clem, do you maybe want to uh, talk to us a little about the OEP article? I know we've looked at this uh, previously, but I notice you've still been actively engaged on it.
So, oh, I see. Uh, Cami has a question here too. So I'll I'll get to you in just a second, Cami. Okay, you're going to continue with it over the next month. Great. Great. So you're going to have plenty to report to us in our reunion. Um, oh yes, Jeanette. Of course, you've both been working on this article. Um, so this is another one where uh, when you started off, it was only three or four sentences, and as you can all see, there's just been a ton of well-sourced information added here. Um, so I, I really think this has been an excellent project. It's really been fun to watch this develop. Um, and I, I'll bet uh, I'll bet Clem and Jeanette would probably also be very happy to have any uh, any input from other students if you want to take a look at this article and, and the talk page and see what they've been up to. Oh yes, uh, Christine, I saw that you um, mentioned that recent article. Thank you for that. So Cami, let's, uh, I'm going to jump back to your question here. Uh, so you say you're quite behind on edits and probably won't reach 200 for the class. Well, that's, uh, so you may not have caught this before. That's not a problem at all from my perspective. That's, uh, you can earn the badge at any time. So finishing it up by the end of the course is a suggestion, but not a requirement. Um, and if you, if you feel you get to that point, you know, next week or next month, feel free to apply for the badge then. You might want to, I, I think I'll get an email notification about it, but you might want to also send me an email on your own just to make sure that I see it. Um, so, so you have three articles that you've been looking at. Um, okay, so that's great. The Indira Gandhi Open University has been flagged for lacking proper citations. Okay, so let's open this up. I'm going to uh, give, give me just a moment, guys, to rearrange the windows on my desktop here. I, I'm sure you're noticing the, the gray bars are getting kind of annoying. Um, I, I have this, I don't know if other people get this, I sometimes get my, my chat window, I'm just, I'm a little frustrated with the software these days. The chat window doesn't get wide enough for me to see it, and I don't, oh, I know what I need to do. I just need to restore the default layout and start fresh. Okay, that's much better. So, uh, sorry for that delay, guys. Uh, anyway, the Indira Open University has been flagged for lacking proper citations. Um, did a preliminary Google search. I'm going to pull that window up as well. So let's, let's have a look at these. So, um, the, the first thing I usually do when I'm searching for citations is I'll actually go to Google News. So if you've pulled it up on the, on the regular Google search, you can click on this News link here, and that'll redo the same search, uh, but looking only at news articles. And then uh, it looks like we have a fair number of results here, but it can also be useful to click on Search Tools. And under any time, you want to actually choose archives because any time is sort of misleading. It's actually only recent articles. If you click on archives, that's really going to give you a very, um, very thorough list. Uh, I'm not, since there are so many results here, I'm actually going to put this in quotes um, just to make sure that we're really getting things that are specifically about this university. Uh, and so uh, these are. Uh, I think we can we can also uh, by default these are sorted by relevance, but we can also sort by date. So let's first look at and see what's coming up by relevance. Um, the first article that comes up apart from its own site is the the Telegraph, which is apparently a publication in Calcutta. Um, and this looks like it may be uh, a, a, an excellent source because it's I mean it's revolutionizing open education. It looks like it's principally about 
the Open University and about its uh, about what it's doing that's innovative. So I would I would imagine that this is probably going to be a very good source. Um, you know, just click on another kind of random one here. Uh, this is again we're getting into an area that's not super familiar to me because I'm not you know an expert on Indian publications, but uh, with a little bit of exploring, I think you'll be able to get a feel for what seem to be um, authoritative sources here. Um, you know, you, you're you're basically going to be looking for things that look like they're serious publications that have been around for a while that have a reputation for accuracy, and distinguishing those from things that look like very recently established blogs. Uh, you know, things that might be might exist to advance a point of view more than to report news and things like that. Um, so here I've clicked on another one. This, you know, just at first glance, so this is from 1997. Uh, we have a lot of dead links, which is prob probably, I would imagine, they've redone their website probably a few times since 1997. Uh, but this looks, again, probably like a, a pretty serious news article. Uh, 1997, that's before blogging really became a, uh, a, a widespread phenomenon. So it's likely that uh, that this is a pretty serious organization. But you'd, again, you'd probably want to do a little bit more reading to, to make that assessment. Um, so, Cami, is this is this kind of uh, kind of search is this helpful? I see Christine's got a suggestion. Also, site seer that is not something I'm familiar with. Can you give us a link to that, Christine? I'm going to just uh, do a Google search for it. Maybe that'll come right up. Oops. Yeah, I'm checking. Uh, I'll have it for you in just a second. OK. I don't know if this is, oh, this is something from Portland State University. Is this the one you were talking about, Christine? Can you see my, my screen? Um, I think that is a, an interface to it, but it's not the one I was okay. thinking about. OK. This is something that um, my friend Kurt Bolacker, um, who has his own article in Wikipedia um, uh, about him, um, developed in a project at Princeton. Okay. Great. So, uh, if you come up with uh, with another link, we'll take a look at it. But it does look to me like this is already coming up with uh, potentially good sources. And these would be if these are um, if these are academic articles in peer-reviewed journals. Then these are probably even better sources than the news sources. Um, as as we've discussed, Wikipedia considers academic peer review to be the Really, the highest standard for uh, for sources. So this looks like a fascinating topic, and I'm really I'm excited to see what you do with it, Kenny. Yeah, that that the the, the site you pulled up does seem to be the uh, the the new. Sites here, site of source. So, good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, uh, Cami, did you have any questions on the other articles you're working on? Anything else you want to talk through? You know, another thing that we could do in our last few minutes. Um, I, I think I brought up, but we didn't really get a chance to do is look through some of the preference, some of the things in the preference screen. Um, why don't you uh, raise your hand if that sounds like like a good thing to do with our last few minutes here? Okay, I'm hearing some dings, so let's do that. Um, 
so I'll just pull, I'm in my, I guess I, I usually use my demo account, so I'm in my normal account, and you can already see that there are the menus at the top of the screen are a bit different than you're probably used to. Um, I have these additional menus here that have some, some more options than you might usually see. So let's take a look at the preference screen and see where that kind of thing lives. I don't know if you've looked at this recently, but there are lots of tabs along the top. It's really gotten, uh, there, there are so many different options on Wikipedia. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is that just like um, article writing, uh, the software interface is something that aims to be open to people to experiment with and add new ideas to. So uh, the the main place for that is this gadgets menu. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with JavaScript. JavaScript is basically a web technology that is run by your own web browser as opposed to being uh, run on the server. So um, it's possible to deliver some code along with a web, web page that tells your web browser how to display some interesting extras. Um, and so it's possible to create JavaScript and just apply it to your own user account. So that's sort of the most basic way that you can mess around with how Wikipedia works. Um, you don't need any kind of approval for that at all. Uh, you can, there are just a couple of pages that live within your user account and allow you to, um, to change the way that the pages appear for you. And then if you do something that you think is of general use, uh, the next step would be to publish that somewhere where you invite other people to copy it and paste it into their own user space. And then if that really seems to take off, the gadgets, uh, it, it's, it's possible to basically wrap up that code and turn it into a gadget where it will appear in everyone's uh, preference screen. So this, this tab, the gadgets tab, can be kind of the most interesting tab to look, look through because you'll find things that, um, that have, have been the result of uh, a lot of different people's innov innovation and, you know, a lot of, a lot of interesting ideas. Um, one that I like is this, uh, is navigation pop-ups. Um, let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to go to a random article in a different tab. So navigation pop-ups. I don't know, actually, if this is going to show up on your end. Uh, I'm not sure how JavaScript works through the Blackboard Collaborate, but can you see a sort of yellow box I can that says African American and has a has a photo? Okay. So navigation pop-ups creates this. It allows you to get a preview of an article, so the first few sentences of the article, um, and then also it gives you these these menus. So just in, without having to click through to the article, you can hover over that link, and here it tells you that suburban is a redirect that goes to suburb, and it shows you the first few sentences of that. And you can also, what if I want to go to the history screen for that article? Instead of having to, to click into suburb and then find the history screen, I can just go directly to this actions menu and choose history. Or if I want to edit the article, I can go directly to the edit screen. I can view the most recent edit, so I'll do that as an example. Um, so this pulls up the, the diff screen, Here's a, which apparently was uh, someone reverting vandalism. Uh, of the most recent edit on that article. So this is really, as, as you can tell, this is something that will really allow you to browse around Wikipedia in a much more efficient way. Uh, as Ben says, flying around us like crazy people. Um, so I really find that one useful. Uh, another one that I like is Twinkle. So you see that listed here. Um, Twinkle puts this, this TW menu here. Now this is something we haven't really delved into in much depth uh, in the class, but uh, this has to do with a lot of the maintenance and administrative type stuff on Wikipedia. So if, uh, if some people really enjoy patrolling all new articles and watching the recent changes uh, of everything on Wikipedia and watching for things like vandalism and um, insertion of copyrighted material and and things like that. So if if you find that um, that that sort of Wikipedia editing appeals to you, uh, Twinkle can be hugely helpful, and it will give you shortcuts to some of the most common um, actions you can take. So uh,
pride as an example, that's proposed deletion. Let's say I was looking at this Sunnyside article and I thought, well, this is probably not notable by Wikipedia's standards. You can just click on prod and it's going to give you this nice form that lets you uh, put in your reason for that. It, this checkbox, you should probably always leave checked, which will notify the original page creator automatically. So we can just type in our reason here and then we would click propose deletion and it would go through several steps for us, putting a banner on this page, putting a notification on a notice board, and notifying the original creator all in one step. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that because that would be a little obnoxious for this random article. Um, I don't know what all the options are in here, but, uh, but they, they tend to be along those lines. So uh, let's see. Anyone else have something particular they, they want to some preference that they've found that they've found useful? There's so much in here, there's no way we're going to cover it all, but um, it'd be fun to have a few people's ideas. Oh, I see. I was asked, what is the tag option? Uh, what is the tag option? Oh, I see. Yeah, this is these are this is for putting the the banners at the top of the article. So if you think that this article needs cleanup or a copy edit, uh, you can check those off. It gives you a place to leave a reason, and then you click submit, and that will automatically put that banner at the top of the article. And there are different ways to view this. You can look at them all in alphabetical order. So this might give you a little bit of a sense of why those banners are so widespread. Uh, if you enable this option, it really becomes very easy to, to slap them on an article. Uh, citations needed. I don't know. There, there's, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, shortcut, which is just uh, if you do CN between double brackets, that will expand to citations needed. Um, but as far as as far as inline in the window, I don't think so. Um, oh, I do have this. Uh, I don't remember if I demonstrated this in class or uh, if this was for someone else recently. Have Have we talked about the Wicked editing screen? So if you look at my screen, it probably looks very different from yours. Is this something that I've covered? This is another thing you can enable in in preferences. Okay, not in this class. Okay, uh, thanks, Christine. That's very helpful that you can <laughs> remember which is which. So uh, let's see if I can find it in the preferences screen first. I'm pretty sure it's going to be under gadgets. Yeah, so it's under the editing section in gadgets, and it's this one here, Wicked. So this replaces the the normal edit screen with this one that has a lot of color coding and um, and it you can see it kind of grays out references. So it makes it a little bit easier as you're looking at the wiki text to discern the actual text of the article. So it's it's just the plain text here. Sunnyside is the is outside of the and then this is a link and inside of this and this is a link and then you come up to a reference and you can see that's that's grayed out. So it makes it a little bit easier visually to to skip over and get to the, where the text continues. Um, and then it gives you this whole toolbar at the top that gives you a lot of options that you won't find in the standard uh, Wikipedia toolbar. So this can be a really useful one as well. Uh, and it has also a nice feature. Um, it's, it's built into Wiked, but it's also available as a separate feature, this Wiked diff. So if you don't want to use that whole uh, different interface. You can just enable the Wicked diff instead, and that will um, that will give you an additional option when you're looking at a diff screen. So I'm going to just look at these last three edits by this IP address, uh, and then if you scroll down, you see this green triangle or delta symbol. Symbol, and as I hover over it, it says Show Improved Diff View. If I click on that. It's going to give me the same information in a in a more readable format. Uh, doesn't seem to be working for me right now. Don't know why that is. But it's basically going to give you all instead of the left and right before and after. It's going to give you just one uh, view of the wiki text with 
highlights in green and red of what has been added and what's been deleted and things like that. So let's see, what else is there in here? Um, we have talked about the watch list a few times. If you, uh, if you haven't yet uh, set up your watch list, I'd really encourage you to, to do that. So um, any article that you're interested in on Wikipedia, uh, you want to just click the, the star at the top. When the star turns blue, that means it's added to your watch list. And then once you have a bunch of things in your watch list, you can just click it up in the, in the top here and see a list of the most recent changes to that. So, and then there are some uh, parameters within the, the watch list section of the preferences that will help you make that, uh, help you really customize that. So whether or not you want to see your own edits in your watch list, um, whether or not you want articles to automatically get added to your watch list as you edit them, things like that. Yes, uh, I see Ben has clarified pages. Not, not just Wikipedia articles, but pages. So, um, so this also applies to wiki projects that you join or user pages for people that you work with closely. Um, any, any page on Wikipedia you can add to a watch list. And um, anytime you add a page to your watch list, it automatically adds the talk page associated with that as well and vice versa. So watching the article on open educational resources is the same thing as watching the talk page for that article. Changes to both are going to show up in your watch list. So see, we've come to the end of our hour. I feel like this just flew by. Um, I I really hope that uh, that you're all planning to submit your projects for the uh, for the WikiSue Burba badge. Um, I would say at least based on the uh, the the general sense I have of them is that I think the work everyone. has done probably qualifies. Uh, I, and I really look forward to, uh, to seeing your reflections on the work that you've done. Again, if you don't feel that it's quite ready yet, feel free to submit for that uh, at any point in the future. Uh, and as a, uh, a final reminder, oh, I see Laurie has gotten to this already. Uh, we will have a reunion on July 16th, so or 16th in the Western Hemisphere, 17th uh, in Asia, Australia. New Zealand. Um, so I very much look forward to seeing you guys there. We'll be sure and get an email out to you reminding you ahead of time. And uh, I especially look forward to finding out what you've all done on your articles in the meantime. Of course, you don't have to, but I, I think some of you have gotten interested enough that you'll probably keep working on it. So I, I look forward to seeing how all that evolves. So thank you so much for joining. And uh, I, I'm really gratified to see your comments in the chat window, and I'll be sure to share those with Sarah as well. Uh, I know she's really enjoyed this round of the class as well. And uh, please do keep in touch. Feel free to leave me a note on my talk page or send an email anytime. Thank you, Pete. This, uh, this second iteration of the course was even better than the first, I think. Oh, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's great to hear that. I, I, I feel that as well. I, I think uh, we had less attrition this time. I think some people dropped off last time probably because it ended up a bit confusing. And thanks to your help and a number of people uh, offering their reflections and feedback, I think we really were able to offer something better this time. So thank you. And I'll see you on the wiki. Bye-bye, all.